We are in Torah Yutet and Likutei Maoran, Seif Hey, part five in this Torah. It's called Tefillah Vechabakuk. And Rabbi Nachman is explaining to us in this Torah the formula of rectifying the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's what this Torah is all about. It's about rectifying this place, this mixture, this mixture of good and bad, <clears throat> this whole physical world that we are living in, this physical experience that we are in is a mixture of good and bad, truth and false, revelation of godliness and concealment of godliness. And in this Torah, Rabbi Nachman explains to us how to rectify that because our physical body as well, our personal reality, our personal world is also a mixture of good and bad. We are made up of anishama, the soul, which is truth, which is godliness. And the concealment of that is the animal soul or the physical self, the physical body. And what we want to do is we want to separate, we want to empower the spiritual self. We want to empower the godly self, the true self, through the physical self. Okay, and so that's what this Torah is about. It's about recognizing that the purpose of the, the Eitzadah Tovarah, the purpose of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, is that... The, we should separate the good from the bad. And through doing this process, we are going to use the bad or use the negative, use the concealment as a throne, so to speak, as a catalyst, so to speak, for the empowerment of the good. And that's what Rabbi Nachman calls the perfection of the holy language. We perfect the holy language through what? Through the Targum, through the the language that is a mixture of good and bad. There are the 70 languages that are complete bad, right? The 70 languages, the, each one of those languages we said, they contain the evil, the negative character traits and the corrupt belief systems of those 70 nations. And then you have on the right side, you have the holy language is completely good. And then you have a language that's, that's a mixture. It represents this, it's a dot of a right, represents the sleeping state where a person is not awake and a person is not dead, but somewhere in between, where a person is a mixture of, of, uh, of consciousness with unconsciousness at the same time. And that's the sleeping state. And that is represented by the language called Targum. And that's why Targum is the same gematria, the same numerical value as Tardema, which means the sleep. That's where, the, that's where a person has dreams, the dreaming state. And that's why the Gemara tells us that dreams are made up, they're a mixture. Dreams are a mixture of truth and false. Every dream has some aspects of truth and some aspects of false. And that's what you have in this sleeping state, in this dreaming state, and in this language called Arami. The Aramaic language, the Targum language, is a mixture of good and bad. And the way that you empower the holy language, the way that you empower the good, is through this midpoint, through this mid-language, through the translation of the Torah, the Aramaic. The language is used to translate the Torah. And when you take that language and you use it for Torah, okay, so you're using this language that's a mixture of good and bad in potential form, and you're using it for the good, using it as a throne for the good, as a catalyst to empower the good, to reveal the good, that means that you're using it to translate the Torah, to explain the Torah. That's why now we understand what were our Chachamim doing throughout all of history. We know that the Zohar, the Holy Zohar, was written in the same language in Aramaic. We know the Gemara, the Talmud, was written in Aramaic. This was the language that when they, were, when they would read the Torah, they would have a Meturgiman that would stand up and would translate it in Aramaic to the whole to the whole, uh, was that really the only language that, 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 that they had back then? No. There were other languages that they were speaking as well. Okay? The, we know from the Gemara that there were other languages that they were speaking. Latin, the, you know, the ancient Latin, the Greek language, the language that the Romans were speaking. Okay? But they chose Arami, and they had this whole intention. We see the Targum, the translation of the Torah, was a whole avoda. There was a whole ritual involved. It was a whole process. And what's the process? What's the significance of this process? It's in order to 
rectify the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, and that's what you're doing. You're taking this language that is re representing that, that mixture of good and bad, and you're using it to reveal the good. So you're using it as a throne for the empowerment of the good. Okay, and so when you're using your speech, the regular language that you use to speak every day, and you're using it to speak Torah, to explain Torah, to express Torah ideas, to reveal godliness in the world, then you are rectifying this etzadat tovara, this tree of good and bad. You're rectifying that mixture. You're selecting the good aspects in that language, right, in potential form, and you're actualizing that that good in 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 act and and using it actually to reveal the good, to express the light of the tree of life of the etzachaim, and that's how you perfect the holy language. Okay, so you're, you're, you're increasing the perfection or the revelation of the empowerment of the Itzachim, of the holy language, of the Chava, of the, the woman of valor that we're speaking about. And that is, says Rabbi Nachman, how you rectify the breeds. That is the same, it's the same formula for how a person will merit to uh, make holy his sexuality. So that a person has merited holy sexuality, sexual holiness. Okay, and why is that? Because Rabbi Nachman says the language, the speech, the holy language is just another manifestation of the same aspect that we call Yesod. We call it the holy, the, the covenant, the Brit, the connection between us and the, the, the transcendent one. Blessed is he, right? The creator of the whole universe. And our connection to the Ribbon Shalom, to the creator of the whole universe is what is called the Brit. The Brit is that connection. And that is the sexuality of a person. When a person has made that holy, he has taken something that is so base in an animal form, right? And every animal in nature has this instinct to procreate and it's embedded instinctively in the animal self of a person. And not only that, the Baal Shem Tov taught that this is the greatest, the greatest, uh, the greatest manifestation of the animal self is in this lust, okay, of immoral, illicit sexual behavior. And he says, because, says the Baal Shem Tov, he explained it by saying that you think about food, okay, and people desire food, the animal self, the body of the person desires food, okay, and a person also desires to drink, and a person desires also to sleep. These are needs the physical self has in order to, uh, to live. But when it comes to procreating, says the Baal Shem Tov, what is in, included in that lust and that desire is a whole body of the child that will, that will be born. A whole body with a whole world of desires for food and for drink and for sleep and for wealth and for significance and for uh, love and for control and for separation. All of these needs, autonomy, all of these needs that the human being has are included in that one act of procreating. So he says the Baal Shem Tov, it's no wonder that it's the greatest uh, the greatest manifestation of the desire of a person is in that, in that aspect, okay? And that's what Rabbi Nachman said in this story as well. He said, you take all the 70 languages, each one of them has a specific desire, a specific uh, uh, urge of the lower self, a specific uh, negative character trait or, or physicality, uh, a physicality, a certain animal instinct each one of them has a specific point of that but the collective when you collect all of them together you combine all of them together that manifests as the burning furnace the furnace of burning lust for immoral illicit sexual behavior okay and so this is very significant for us to recognize that if it's like that then that means that when a person has purified that aspect that energy has been purified and redirected and channeled now to the transcendent and the eternal life okay 
then a person merits the greatest level of godliness, the greatest connection to Hashem. Okay, because because that is the greatest block to the light. So once you have taken that energy and transformed it into a positive, so it's no longer blocking the light, then you experience the greatest and deepest experience, the most profound experience of that light, of the godliness, of the eternal life, of the Itzachayim. And that's what Rabbi Nachman is explaining to us in this Torah. And this Torah is all in order to explain to us the significance of receiving Torah directly from the tzaddik, gazing upon his face, hearing the Torah directly from his mouth. And when you do that, says Rabbi Nachman, you merit that the Torah is not just an intellectual idea. It's not just another fun fact that you add to your uh, library of knowledge, of things that you know about the world or about religion or about God or about history. What it is, in essence, is a, uh, it's a spiritual energy. It's a spiritual force that will guide you and motivate you intrinsically. You will feel this intrinsic motivation from your inner soul, which is sourced in the Torah itself, to be directed to Hashem, to be returned to Hashem, to be returned to your perfect state. And that's because the tzaddik has gone through this process of purifying his physical self, of purifying um, and selecting the truth from the non-truth within himself. And therefore his face is so clear, his face is so purified and so clean that it's like a mirror. And anyone who looks at the tzaddik, they see within themselves like they're seeing their reflection. All those aspects that need to be fixed, and they're in, intrinsically motivated to fix them and guided to fix them, and they're and and they're, and they're successful in fixing all of that. They're influenced and empowered to fix all of those aspects, and they also merit a tremendous level of tikkun. And that's really what the purpose of here learning Torah is. Learning Torah is not to add to my repertoire of knowledge. Learning Torah is in order to return to Hashem. Right? Torah is is that's the essence of Torah. That's what's called Torah lishma. To, to return to Hashem through the learning of the Torah. And that happens in the greatest way when you're receiving Torah directly from the Tzad. But at the same time, this Torah that Rabbi Nachman is teaching us here also includes for us the instructions of how we can become that Tzadik. Okay, how can we purify ourselves so that the, the, the bad aspects of the tree of knowledge of good and bad are no longer covering up the good. Instead, they become a throne They've become, they've become a throne for the empowerment of the good, for the revelation of the good. And that happens through the Tikkun Abrit, says Rabbi Nachman, the purification, rectification of a person's sexuality to a state of absolute, complete holiness and connection with Hashem. And when a person does that, says Rabbi Nachman, a person will merit also to be able to interpret the dreams because the dreams are the mixture of truth and false in the dream state, in the sleep state, which is that state of mixture of truth and false. And to the extent that in your personal reality, in your waking state, in your conscience, conscious state, you have separated the good from the bad, and you are no longer vulnerable to the bad in any mixture. You're no longer vulnerable to that illusion, okay? Nothing fools you anymore. So then, when you see a dream or when you hear about a dream, you're no longer fooled by the falsehood in that dream. You're able to cut right through all of that nonsense and see the truth as it is and interpret it clearly. And that's what Yosef Atzadik had. Yosef Atzadik had this power because Yosef Atzadik had also the Brit. He had, he had the, made holy his sexuality in the greatest way to a point where he is the model, the hero from all of the tzaddikim of the generations. He is known as the hero, the model of the greatest level of holiness, the greatest level of sexual holiness that a person can ever achieve. We learn from Yosef at Tzaddik. And therefore, just another manifestation of the same aspect is his perfection of the holy language. When he tells his brothers, Kipiyam medaber alechem. This is, listen to my speech. It's, it's the holy language that I'm speaking to you in. Nobody else could speak that language unless they were in that great spiritual 
uh, state, in that great state of holiness, of sexual holiness, Tikkun Abrit. And so Rabbi Nachman is teaching us that the greatest power that we have to extinguish and dissolve the burning furnace of uh, lust, the furnace of burning lust for immoral sexual behavior is through our holy speech. And holy speech, we explained yesterday, we mentioned yesterday that it's, it's when you're using the holy language in a way that it's infused with holy spirit. What does that mean, holy spirit? It means that you're speaking it from a deep state of holy consciousness. Okay, dvekut, a state of uh, dvekut. And David HaMelech did that when he wrote Tehillim. We spoke about how the Arizal teaches us that in the same way as Moshe Rabbeinu is known as the greatest prophet of all the generations throughout all of history, there was no greater prophet than Moshe Rabbeinu. David HaMelech had the greatest level of Ruach HaKodesh. So these are two different spiritual superpowers, so to speak. There is prophecy, the ability, uh, the power of Nevuah, and then there is Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. And Moshe had the greatest power of prophecy, the greatest clarity of prophecy, the greatest uh, type of prophecy throughout all of history than anyone else. And, and David HaMelech had the greatest Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And so when he spoke, when he spoke and when he wrote the words of Tehillim, these prayers, they are infused with Ruach HaKodesh. And so now we gain also a greater understanding of the tremendous power of reading Tehillim. When you read Tehillim, you are speaking Lashon HaKodesh. Okay? How do I speak Lashon HaKodesh? How do I increase my Lashon HaKodesh? Rabbi Nachman says that he brings the Pasuk from Tehillim. The David HaMelech says, Cham libi My heart was burning within me. Rabbi Nachman says it's a reference to the burning furnace, the, the furnace of burning lust. Right? And what did I do? Dibati bilshoni. I spoke with my tongue. I spoke with my, I used my mouth and I spoke these, these holy words. And so how do you fulfill that? How do you take all of that energy that a person has uh, built up within himself and instead of allowing it, uh, God forbid, to be, uh, to, to, to persuade the woman of valor, right? And to steal away the seed of a person. And as we said, and the Mikra Laila, right? A, a nocturnal emission, okay? What basically, uh, a, when a person has a situation in a dream where a person loses seed in the middle of the night, and instead of it being used, channeled in that way, where that burning furnace is used by the primordial serpent to steal the seed of a person, to steal that holy energy within the person, and to be channeled in a negative place. Instead of that, if you take that energy and you channel it through the holy language, you channel it by speaking holy language. And so that burning furnace is now these words, words that are infused with that heat, heat of, of love for Hashem. A, a, a burning love for Hashem, a burning dvekut, okay? It's a deep spiritual connection, a deep connection to Hashem where a person is, is burning with the fire of excitement of holiness, okay? Eish Kodesh, burning a holy fire, okay? Well, we, we speak about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and we, 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 uh, we burn all of these fires on the day of Lag Baomer, because Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai represents this holy fire, okay, and it's the com it's the complete opposite of the fire of burning lust of that immoral sexual behavior, and so in order to extinguish that 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 burning lust, that burning furnace, you just channel all of that energy into a holy fire through your holy words, through the Racha Kodesh, through let's say Tehillim. Or reading Zohar, for example, reading Zohar is tremendously powerful for this as well, because first of all, it's Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is this aspect, and also because it's Targum, using the language of Targum to reveal godliness, to reveal the Torah in the greatest way possible. The, in the deepest, highest revelation of godliness in the Torah is in the secrets of the Torah. What's revealed in the Zohar. 
And here they're taking the language of Arami, the language of Targum, that mixture, and using it to reveal the greatest aspects of the Torah. And so Zohar is a tremendously powerful way when a person reads Zohar, even one page of Zohar every day. Okay. Then Rabbi Nachman himself revealed Tikkun Aklali. Tikkun Aklali is the 10, uh, 10 chapters of Tehillim that Rabbi Nachman says is a concentration of the whole Tehillim. The whole Tehillim is included in the Tikkun Aklali because the, the, the whole Tehillim is made up of 10 types of song. And these 10 chapters, Rabbi Nachman pointed out, are the source for each one of these 10 types of song. So when you say the 10 chapters of Tikkun Aklali, it's as if you're saying the whole Tehillim. It includes the whole Tehillim in there. It's a concentrated form of the whole Tehillim. And so in less under 10 minutes, a person can merit to speak every day a concentration of the whole Tehillim of David HaMelech that has the Ruach HaKodesh. And then also when a person speaks with his friends, with his family, to speak with more awareness of Hashem. To, to speak that not only the, the content that, of what you're speaking about is holy and connected, but also the way you're speaking it is holy and connected. Okay, and so let's see more about that here. Let's see inside a little bit. Somebody that doesn't have the perfection of the holy language, okay, speaking in this holy way, and therefore he has all of this burning furnace within him, then there is this, this stormy wind, the Ruach Se'ara, which represents the primordial serpent, it represents the woman of foolishness, that comes to... Take that energy to, to extinguish that energy. That energy has to go somewhere. That energy, that fire has to go somewhere. And so it cools it off by causing this person the happening of the night. The mikre laila. And the words mikre laila, the word mikre not only means happening, it also means it has a connotation of korcha, of cooling off. A cooling off of the night would be another way of translating those words. Mikre laila, cooling off that happens in the night. So there's that sexual energy, that burning furnace that has not been channeled in a holy way. And then the person is in a state of vulnerability to that stormy wind, okay, to that woman of foolishness, to the, uh, to the harlot, so to speak. And, and she causes him, she causes that energy to be the, the cooling off of that energy, the, the release of that energy in a negative way, okay? And that's also what we see by Amalek when it says, Asher karcha baderech. He happened upon you in the way, and we said, karcha also means he cooled you off. Okay? Baderech. Rabbi Nachman now points out also another thing about Amalek. He happened upon you on the way, or he cooled you off. Okay? Released. Caused the release of that energy within you, or the loss. A loss is a more accurate way of saying it, because it's not just the release of it. It's the loss of that energy. So when a person is channeling that energy in a holy way, maybe you can call it a release because it's being released, but it's in re being released in a productive way. That energy is not lost. You've used it to infuse those holy words. And those holy words create a holier reality for you, a more pleasurable reality for you, a, more, a, a reality of more blessings, of more brachot. But when that energy, instead of being channeled in a positive way, it's channeled in that negative way, then we can call it a loss. So I guess loss is probably more accurate than saying a release. So it causes the loss of that energy, of that fire. And so Amali caused that loss of that energy, of that fire by Am Yisrael. And what's really interesting, I'm just going to say this as a footnote, is that when we fought Amalek with Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu helped us to defeat Amalek, it says over there that the defeat of Amalek was done by the hands of Moshe. And it says about Moshe's hands, And his hands were emuna. And so that's really interesting because of what we know from Rabbi Nachman, that the perfection of the holy language is itself the aspect of emuna, of the awe of Hashem. And so that's the way that you overcome this Amalek. It's by channeling all of that energy into a connection with Hashem, emuna. In Hashem, which is what infuses, which is basically Ruach HaKodesh, 
That's called the Holy Spirit that infuses the, the holy language. That's, that's the consciousness that we are, we are using to, in, to speak this holy language in a holy way. Okay, and so what does the baderech mean on, on the way? So it says, Rabbi Nachman, who bechinat ken derech isha mina afet, Shahua Sara, Olek derech atargum, Shu bechinat noga, Bionek mina hashmal hanal. So derech is, he says, it's the aspect that Shlomo Amel speaks about in Mishle, the way of the promiscuous woman, the way of derech. What's really interesting that Rabbi Nachman in other places in the Kutem Ran speaks about derech gaver. The word derech has a meaning of, has a real connection to sexuality. And this could be for many ways, for many reasons. One of the reasons I'm just going to point out now is that the way, the path that a person walks on is with your legs, with your feet. And the whole aspect of the sexuality of a person is connected to the legs of a person. It's connected to those lower three spherot, the netzach hod yisod of the person. And so the path, the path of a man, the way of a man, okay, has a, is, is the aspect of the sexuality of the man and it can be used in a positive way. And it can be used as what we speak about, the pathway of the, the promiscuous woman. Derech isha afit. And that's what it's used by, by Amalek, right? Amalek takes them, he takes them and he cools them off or he steals and causes the loss of that energy on the way. He happened upon you on the way. Okay, That means the sexuality of Ben Israel, of those people that were outside of the camp, right? The Medrash tells us it wasn't all Ben Israel. He caused them to fall. Okay, and that's how he was able to, that's what empowered him to, to kill a lot of Ben Israel to murder a lot of Bnei Israel. That's what empowered him in the war. It's those sparks of holiness that he stole by uh, ascending through the path of Targum. Okay, so the path of Targum is the pathway that is somewhat still vulnerable to that other side, to the primordial serpent. It's not blocked off from them. They have access to it. It's accessible to them. And through that pathway, they're able to also jump the fence to the side of holiness. Okay, so through that pathway, they persuade the woman of valor to steal that energy, to steal that sustenance. Vionek mina chashma, right? So that's the clip of Noga that we spoke about, Shuhu Noga, Vionek mina chashma lanal. And then they're able to uh, draw from the chashma that we spoke about earlier, the aspect of chashma, which is this energy that was this energy, this holy energy, which is. Uh, which is the, the, the energy of creativity, of holy creativity. And so we'll see more about that in tomorrow's class, Bezrat Hashem.